All right, what is up, everybody? This is Zach Zacharias. We are back again with more of Avedon to the Corruption. So let's go ahead and continue with our exploration of Avedon here. Because, of, as always, we may have quests and the like to uh, uh, get, which is very likely going to be the case anyway. So, yeah. Ooh, more lockpicks. Okay, that will lead to the Abaddon Dungeons, which I don't need to get right now. And I just noticed in my inventory that, yeah, we have a runestone now, so let's go ahead and use that. When you have a runestone, you can combine it with one of your weapons or pieces of armor to make a stronger item. Combine a runestone and item, drop them in the forge area to the lower right, and press the combine button. If the items in the forge can be combined, you will receive a new item. You can only enhance a weapon or a piece of armor at once. I do like to boost more to the weapon a little bit more, so we will do that. So we will give Kalita a little boost there. Animal skin. Yeah, I really wish in the first Savadon for Sevel and the Blade Master, I should have uh, leveled up this path just to explore what that looks like. But obviously, since I will be taking Khalid, I will be sticking on the right path. Oh dang, I thought I was going to get attacked at first. Oh snap. We got another scarab in here. Give this to him. Oh, nice, another rune stone. War cry. A terrifying howl inflicts war curse on all nearby foes. Which one do I want to... I guess we can do armor now since... Uh... So yeah, we used uh, both squats here. Middle-aged woman crosses the courtyard back and forth, shouting orders to the soldiers and workers. As hands enter and leave, she grabs them and gives them extra jobs to do. She wears a well-worn bow over her shoulder, and the heart pattern on the shoulder of her armor shows her to have considerable authority. 
He inspects you as you approach. The new hand. Your name was... Don't tell me. Malik, another hand to throw in the face of our enemies. I am Hart Callan, honored advisor to Redbeard. Can you tell me about yourself? I can, if I must. I prefer to forget all I can about my life before I came here. Not because I hated that life, because I now only focus on restoring Abaddon to his proper glory. Is there anything you can tell me? She thinks. Yes, I think I will, because there is a lesson a young hand can learn from it. I was raised in the wild, free lands of the wild realm, to the west. I was part of a proud tribe that has long fought the corruption for the good of the pack. But that was not enough for me. I was the finest archer in our tribe. I decided to put my skills to use here, serving Redbeard. Uh, what is the corruption? Blasted land of crags, peaks, and monstrosities. A lesson to all why it is important for Abaddon to bring mad wizards to heal as quickly as possible. Fortunately, it's not much of a bother. The occasional horror slithers out and we fill it with arrows. Nothing we cannot defeat. So you are a warrior, warrior of the Wild Realm. No, I am not of the Wild Realm any more than you are of the land you came from. We are of Avedon now. This is a vital lesson. Why did you leave your homeland? She shrugs. I miss the fields and woods, I suppose. But the simple truth is this. Unlike most of my people, I have developed a taste for cities. Love them, in fact. Tell me more about Redbeard. Everyone fears him. It is terribly unjust. None do more or fight more fiercely to help the people of the pack sleep securely in our beds. I have nothing to fear from him. You know why? Because I am loyal. I fight for right. And he knows that. I have been a loyal partner to him. A partner? Lesser partner, yes. She adds, sadly, I even used to have a nickname. I was one of Redbeard's three wives. His wife? Really? No. I, Ilira, and Hart Miranda were called his wives because we worked with them so closely for so long. Miranda betrayed us. Lyra died in the assault caused by that betrayal. Our marriage ended just as badly as many marriages outside Avedon. Is Redbeard actually married? Nobody knows. Who knows what he does or where he travels when, when he disappears into his tower. Perhaps he has a partner, partner somewhere in Linnaeus. A home children all ignorant of who he really is it is a mystery i would never ask because i know he would not answer Hart callan continues to tirelessly roam the halls of abaddon looking for anyone who seems the least bit idle and putting them to work what is it malik do you have information for me what do you do in abaddon i am a heart i advise redbeard on how to best to defend the pact from day to day my job job is trying to restore abaddon to greatness has become her voice trails off you are a young hand and i choose to wait until you have proved yourself a little more little bit more before i can confide in you is there anything i can do for the good of Avedon? many things perhaps someday if you want to help with our defenses go west and speak with i laria L laria the politics i deal with personally require great care when you have more experience i might be able to use your aid she thinks. Also, I am always looking for information. You want me to give you information? I do. From time to time, you might find that someone you might meet, without thinking, stumble into behavior that threatens the pack. Why, even your fellow hands might su suffer such minor errors of judgment. When this happens, please keep me informed. You will be paid for your time, and it will give me the chance to step in and speak with the unfortunate before anything worse happens. You want me to spy on my fellow hands for you? Spy? No. Monitor them. Inform me of any behaviors or attitudes you think would damage Abaddon. I will learn what I can. I can ask no more than that. I would like to give you some information. You immediately have Hart Callan's full attention. Really? You have information about someone? Please tell me. Be assured I will only act for the good of Abaddon and the pack. I want to talk about Polis. Callan makes a sour face. This is the first I've heard of this. He has served Abaddon's hands, eyes, and hearts for forever. Why don't you trust him? She taps her foot impatiently. He's from the Tawan Empire. Callan snorts derisively at you. Don't waste my time telling me something everyone knows. Farlanders serve Abaddon all the time. Usually as informers, of course, but not exclusively. 
If you find information on him, bring it to me. Otherwise, leave Polis be. I don't have anything to say. Art Callan no nods. Noted. That was all I need to know. Back to the hunt, then. This is a dark time, but never give up. With courage, we will defeat the enemies of the pack, both within and without. Art Callan has been entrusted by Redbeard with the job of elevating Abaddon's reputation with the Handbars Council. She will reward you if you can help her with this vital work. There are no opportunities for you to help her at the moment, but that may change. Return and speak with her occasionally. In memory of Talera of the Kepa, first keeper of Abaddon. Malik, she died for you. You read it again. There it is. Your name appears to be carved into the stone. What an ostentatious bit of magic. Exactly the sort of thing you expected to find in Abaddon. This is the grand entrance courtyard of Abaddon. Once a sprawling garden, half of it is now given over to the storage and maintenance of catapults. Here to defend the Black Fortress in case of, an, case of attack. One exhausted eye, wearing the equipment of a Tinker Mage, is in command. She guides the guards and workers who are attending to the defenses. As usual, the resources and manpower in, are entirely inadequate for the task at hand. She walks over to greet you. Stifling a yawn, she says, I am Ilaria of Daram. I am... He waves at all the equipment that surrounds her. You can see. Tell me about our defenses. Oh, I can't say everything. Part of the new system is making sure no, no one servant of Abaddon knows everything. But there are a lot of defenses. Magical traps, turrets, soldiers, catapults. Redbeard has been pretty thorough. At least, that's what he says. Nobody knows everything? Nobody but Redbeard, of course. That way, one traitor's heart can't get most of us killed. It's been a full two years since an attack devastated our fortress, so the system works. Have you seen all these defenses? No, but Redbeard says they exist. Well, I've heard that he said that, which is as close enough to the truth as I need, or am allowed to hear. What are the catapults for? From the ground, Abaddon is reached by one long, narrow bridge. The catapults are all aimed at various points along it, to shower any attackers with death. You think Abaddon will be attacked along that route? It's the only route we haven't been attacked by, so we're due. I, Laria sits on a pile of catapult shot and takes a drink of water. Phew, lots to do. Turrets to maintain, conscripts to find, knights to take a rest. Why isn't I doing all this? Because I was available. Because I am a tinker mage. I should be making device, devices to spy and gather information, but Breadbeard says my skills are better used for, you know, all this mess. At least he still really realizes that tinker mages are the true experts at what we do. Someone believes otherwise? Ilaria indulges in a long, heartfelt sigh. It feels good, so she lets out another. Craftmaster Nicodemus, whatever his skills, thinks that we are clumsy and unskilled. He has been trying to prove that he can do whatever we do, and better. As a result, the library tower is already unusable. Who knows what other arm he will inflict before he regains his sanity. You think he can regain his sanity? Assuming he ever had it, I am an optimist at heart. What exactly do you maintain? Catapults and turrets at the front gate, and that is all. I could do a lot more, but I would need conscripts. She gives you what she incorrectly believes to be a winning smile. Actually, I've been trying to get someone to trawl the dungeons for volunteers to help me with my stuff. Nothing would please me more than helping you. I would be ecstatic. I am so pleased. It is a simple task. The stairs down to the dungeons are in the storms to the south. Go down there and ask for volunteers to come up and help me. You're sure to find a few prisoners desperate enough to say yes. Talk to Imamora to get access to the cells. He's not far from the dungeon entrance. I, Laria, tends to the defenses at the front gate of Abaddon. She constantly needs more help and supplies. She asks you to descend into the Abaddon dungeon and ask the prisoners for volunteers to help maintain the defenses. Ask Imamora for help. 
Okay, so we have one quest in the dungeons there. This is the glorious dying call of Abaddon, where hands, guards, and envoys can stop at any hour of the day to bolt down a quick meal before returning to their work. You do recognize Yannick and Kalita sitting at two of the tables. Different tables. Since they spend so much time traveling together, they must like to spend their leisure time apart. Okay, just making sure we explore. Get most of this uncovered here. You meet Kalita. She likes to rest at this table in Avedon's main dining hall, where she cleans and sharpens her blades and eats every meal they will give her. Even though she is off duty, she wears her full armor and her weapons are all close at hand. When she sees you, she rises, a broad smile on her face. Malik, it's good to see you. This is where I am usually found when I am in... Her fa face trails off. Her occasional fugues are now familiar to you. Avedon, she finally concludes, come, join me. I am curious about those pauses in your speech. She looks away. I am sorry, Malik. I do not wish to discuss it. All I will say is that I have never had one in battle. You can trust my blade. I will not let you down. What do you do while you are in Abaddon? I prepare. I train. I keep alert. I wait for someone to choose me for a mission. Sometimes I wait for a long time. Why do you have to wait for so long? Because of my pauses it worries some even though i have never had one while in actual battle some are afraid that there will be a first time i am glad to have your blade at my side she smiles and salutes you with her blade that is good to hear kalita sits at the table and cleans her weapons she frequently greets the other hands and eyes and trades tales from the road the pauses in her speech are far more frequent when she is inside the black fortress but everyone seems to be used to it. How is the food? Excellent and plentiful. It's amazing how much you need to eat when you wear plate armor eight hours a day. Tell me about how you came to Avedon. The question immediately causes her to tune out. Her eyes grow unfocused. Her speech ceases. Then, ten seconds later, she resumes chatting with you as if nothing happened. A uh, good day to you. And to you, Malik. Don't forget me next time you leave the Black Fortress. Yannick the Sorcerer sits at a long table surrounded by his research. He spends all of his spare time here, continuing his research on lost cultures. His books and notes show the stains of many minor food and drink spills. Yannick is ever able to set his work aside when you are near. He makes pleasant conversation with you. Uh, tell me more about your work. When I am not serving Abaddon, I continue my research, my life's work. I study the many lost civilizations of Linnaeus. I want to understand their history, their customs, what caused their destruction, and, most importantly, their magic. I stopped being able to focus on this work when Avedon conscripted me, but I am still allowed it in my spare time. You were conscripted. Yes, much as you were. I prefer not to discuss it. Keeps me from being bitter. Have you achieved anything? Oh yes, despite the hard work and the danger, there is much to learn. What I lost in freedom, I gained in travel and in access to Avedon's libraries. Yannick is ever able to set his work aside when you are near. He makes pleasant conversation with you. Learned any new magic lately? Yes, from Avedon's trainers, from Avedon's libraries, from my work? No. It has been fascinating, but not in a practical way. Have we found anything interesting in our travels? Not yet. Nothing yet. Only trivia. But now, I'm travel now that I am traveling with you, I am optimistic. I think I will find something fascinating very soon. Okay. 
This is one of Avedon's gardens, kept warm and protected from the icy winds outside by the magic of the Black Fortress. The Shadow Walker Yoshiria is slowly walking over the grass, lost in concentration. When you are close, Yoshiria gives you her polite attention. She watches you silently, waiting to see what you want. You are very quiet. Yes, that is why I walk here. She smiles. Do not think all, all Shadow Walkers or Hoklanans are as quiet as me. Some are quite loud. In fact, loud Shadow Walkers. Oh, we are all quiet in the field, of course. But when off duty, we can drink and shout with the best. What about you? I speak when I have something to say. Do not worry on my behalf. Some dismiss me once, I make sure they do not do it twice. Uh, I'd like to know more about you. She nods. That is fair. I was forced to leave Hoklanda. I needed a place to serve. I did not want to be a mercenary. Avedon was the only option. Why were you forced to leave? I choose not to discuss it. Not yet. I would not say until I am forced. No offense. Do you still have family there? I do. I have been told they are well. How did you become a Shadow Walker? A combination of ambition and skill. Are many women trained as Shadow Walkers? Not until very recently. The men kept us out, not wanting the competition. We persisted until they could no longer refuse. Uh, I like to talk about Abaddon. There is a long, awkward pause. My opinions can be unpopular. I have learned not to share them to those I have just met. I mean no offense. Okay, so that looks like that's all we're getting out of you of Shiria for now. Okay, so so far we're just getting a lot of filler. Which makes sense, because we also got a lot of filler in the first Avanon game before we really got into fighting and missions and stuff like that. And I definitely do not want to just, you know, skip over a bunch of stuff. Okay, so this half can't be accessible yet. Some javelins here. Iron iron short sword. Ooh, since we have our shaman here, we can equip him with the javelin. You were surprised to find the young shaman Dedrick in the training room. One might expect to find a shaman in a garden or something, but he's working up a sweat practicing with his javelins. Dedrick is eager to take a break from his practice. He holds some ice on his throwing arm and sits on a bench with you, making conversation. You notice that he tends to sit so that the tattoo on his face is toward the wall, obscuring it from view. Tell me where you are from. The Wild Realm, one of the southern tribes. We lived and ran in a deep wood. I was a young shaman there, rising quickly. It was a good youth. I love to remember it. That was before all of this darkness. Are your people rebelling now? Thankfully, no. My tribe is just outside the rebel area. This is a great blessing. I do not have to wait for the inevitable news of the destruction of my home and my family. What do you think of the rebels? They must be crushed. They will be crushed. I sympathize with their complaints, but the pact must be kept intact. You sympathize? Submitting to the dictates of Hanvar's council has cost us much. The privacy of our sacred rituals, lands we believe is ours, the ability to charge souls on roads through lands we control, even if the pact has declared them to be free roads. We of the Wild Realm feel these costs every day. Our only difference is in whether or not the price is too high. The costs are worth the, what the pact provides, security and prosperity. You are saying if I measure the cost versus benefits on the vast scale, it is still tipped in the pack's favor. Uh, thank you, I see your point. You are practicing with the javelin? I do. Sometimes we shamans become so attuned to the power of nature that we forget to tend to our more mundane powers. I'd like to know more about your tattoo. Dedrick looks down and sighs. 
I am tired, Malik, and I do not know you. Carrying it is a constant burden. Perhaps we can discuss it in time. The master of Avedon's training hall is an old Hulk London woman. She uses the cane to circle slowly around the hall. The cane also serves to deliver painful punishment to anyone slacking off or showing poor form. She eventually cycles around to you. I am Hand Cade, she says, and this is my domain. I am here to teach the younger hands, to help them survive all that are hunting us. How long have you trained here? 30 years. I was too old to be a shadow walker, but I had the benefit of knowledge. It was gained by decades surviving in my work. Too old? Really? The most important skills for a shadow walker, knowing one's, knowing one's own capabilities and seeing reality as it exists. Why did you come to Abaddon? To aid the pact. It is how I choose to spend all my declining years. Hand K circles the training hall. You can see that she uses a cane because one of her legs has been injured. Her thigh has a painful looking dent in it. She nods to you. Malik, you wish to learn? What happened to your leg? I am not shy about answering. It is a badge of honor. It happened in the raid of a on Abaddon. The disaster Miranda visited upon us. What happened? Miranda's agents came in and began to kill. They were deadly warriors, and yet, even in my advanced age, none of them could match me. I had not killed in many years. I soon found I had not lost the ability. Tell me about Miranda. Our Miranda was once Avalon's most trusted advisor. Now she is her greatest traitor. All here wish nothing more than the hair of her death. Uh, I would like training. I can train you. However, you have come here like most with all the basic knowledge. I can teach you many secrets of battle. In the way of Avedon, these secrets must be earned. You can't just help me? My time is limited and all lust over the secrets I know. Redbeard feels that all must be earned. To gain my knowledge, you must show yourself worthy. How do I earn training? You must bring me a token of honor. A what? A token, a prize, a sign of doing a great deed for Avedon. Sometimes a literal token given as a reward. Sometimes an item of value to Avedon, lost and then reclaimed. If you find such a thing, bring it to me. Any idea where I might find one? Yes. One. There is a tower to the west. I was asked to create a testing hall. I am still working on it. It is in need of being tested. I will have the gate open. If you can reach the top, you will find a token. Is it dangerous? Probably too much so. That is why it needs to be tested. I would wait until you are very experienced to enter. Hand Kate is a hand tr head trainer of a in Abaddon. She reserves her most useful lessons for, for those who have proved themselves in the field. If you can find a token or banner that is significant to Abaddon, bring it to her. She will, ro she will reward you with knowledge. Okay, so we can't get to this area up here, but I've talked to a bunch of people and also, okay, so yeah, like she said, there is a, uh, oh, they opened this door yet. Okay, so this is Yonix's room, although he's definitely not here. Eyes, hands, and hearts. The power of Abaddon looms over all of Linnaeus. Even in its current weakened state, its word is law. Its attention brings judgment. And of course, such force needs control and organization to be properly deployed. For that reason, the warriors and agents of Abaddon are divided into four factions. The Eyes are spies. They wander silently through the lands of Linnaeus looking for signs of chaos. When the Eyes discover someone who would disrupt the peace of the pact, they call the Wrath of Abaddon. The identity of the master spies is the guarded secret. 
Only Redbeard knows the names of the most effective eyes. The Hands are the largest faction. They are warriors, shadow walkers, and mages. They are the ones who openly investigate signs of chaos and who inflict the judgment of Avedon. Unlike the eyes, the identities of the most effective hands are known far and wide. The hearts are the researchers and advisors. They are the sages who monitor the libraries of Avedon, answer the master's questions, and provide advice. Only the hearts can save their minds to Redbeard without fear. In fact, that is their most important purpose. And finally, there is the master, Redbeard, the one who decides who is spared and who is destroyed. Okay, I guess we can put this on Yoshiria. Alright, this is the Tower of Trials, but we are not strong enough for it yet. I, I do know that. So let's go up here. All right, let's see if we can talk to Redbeard again real quick. You slip back into Redbeard's hall. The keeper is sitting on his throne, lost in reports from the field, and he doesn't notice your approach. He looks as exhausted and lacking of sleep as he did the first time you met him. Then he detects your presence. He jumps in his chair. Then he is furious. Malik, what are you doing? Slinking around? Hiding in the shadows? I might have mistaken you for an assassin. If I did, you would be dead now. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Redbeard nods. He takes a deep breath and slowly regains control. Oh, that's all right, Malik. Just skulk a bit less and things will be fine. These are hard times. We are all on edge. Even me. He watches you from the corners of his eyes. Fatigue. It is everywhere. Do I seem tired at you? Seem tired to you? Yes, we are all tired. It is understandable. Yes, all tired. Miranda's betrayal broke something in us all, and we are still grieving the loss. Even me. But enough moping. I do not have time to talk, Malik. I prefer you leave me. He waves you away. This is a small gymnasium. Here, Redbeard can exercise, practice with his blade, and keep himself in the sort of shape he needs to be in to fend off assassins. Being invited to train here with him is probably a great honor and a dangerous one. Okay, so I'm not gonna wield a spear, but we can still sell these for money. Iron broadsword. Get some more healing potions. My room can't be accessed. One of Redbeard's hearts is patrolling his tower. She walks through the corridors, looking through windows and taking notes. She occasionally records the location of a bit of dirty floor so that some poor steward can be shouted at later. She notices you as she walks by. Are you allowed to be... Oh, wait. She checks the scroll. You are Malik. Yes, you can be here. I am Heart Hannah. I offer you a late welcome to Abaddon. You are Heart of Abaddon? That is my honor. Redbeard brought me here from the Kaba. As for me personally, my family has some prestige in the Kaba, and so we are expected to send many to serve. What did you do in the Kaba? I was an inquisitor. I sought those who violated the Stone Code. A harsh life, I made many hard decisions. This appealed to Redbeard. How did Redbeard hear about you? His hands, eyes, and hearts are always looking for talented souls to bring to the Black Fortress either voluntarily or by conscription. Of course, I chose to come here, enthusiastically. Tell me about your family. We have wealth and position. In the Kava, however, such privileges are paid for with service. It is a vital part of our honor. Our laws are harsh, but wise. What sort of service? 
military, legal, charity. One measure of a family's value is how many of its children serve the people of the, and the pact. By being here, I serve the pact and my family's prestige at the same time. It is satisfying. But then there can be problems, such as when two sisters from the same family find themselves in opposition. Sisters? You might as well hear the gossip from me. My sister is here, Envoy Deeran, sent by Hanvar's council to examine Abaddon. If you have time, I might briefly discuss her with you. Uh, what are you doing? Redbeard has given me one job. Use the keen eye of an Inquisitor of the Cava to examine Abaddon. Look for flaws in our defenses, ways to save money, places where we are weak. Where do you look? Everywhere. There is not one inch of Abaddon that is not open to me. Well, I haven't been in the deep dungeons for a while. Security problems. Everywhere else is subject to my judgment. How does the rest of Abaddon feel about you? Considering that my main purpose is to judge them and give them more work, I am not popular. I do not care. My duty is more important than their opinions. Uh, I'd like to know more about Redbeard. It is not wise to gossip about the Keeper. Many think that the Keeper is overtired. I do not agree. He is a human, after all, and the stresses on him are great. Uh, tell me about your sister. Her name is Envoy Deeran. She is here to explore Abaddon, learn more about its chambers, its needs, and capabilities. She wants hands to give her information about the tower. She is in the damper regions of the storerooms under the kitchens. Storerooms? Oh, yes. It is miserable for her. Encourages her to leave, we hope. She gives you a wicked grin. I think of it as revenge for the endless teasing I endured from her as a child. What should be done about her? Actually, I was hoping that you would help her. It would show Hanbar's counsel that we are trustworthy, and it would get rid of her sooner. Redbeard is the current master of Abaddon, a post he has held for an unthinkable term for over 50 years. He was originally selected by Hanvar's council as a compromise candidate, weak and dependent on them, who would preside over the slow decline of Abaddon. His, sur his servile exterior turned out to be a ruse. Once he was keeper, he proved to be a master at trading favors and accumulating influence and power. Instead of weakening Abaddon, he made it stronger than ever. Redbeard was a true believer in his purpose, to be an impartial, lethal flow of it of anyone who would weaken the pact. As a result, Redbeard is responsible for countless deaths during the years of his term, all caused, or so he would claim, in the name of peace of stabil and stability. He has shown an uncanny ability to recognize the limits of his power, only arresting or destroying a powerful figure when he senses that it is safe to do so. Despite his dread purpose, Redbeard is a jolly figure, eager to drink, joke, and sing. To some, this pleasant exterior only makes him more terrifying. Nobody knows Redbeard's age or what strange techniques he uses to extend his life. He doesn't seem to have aged in decades. He still seems as engaged and powerful as ever. But whether this will enable him to repair the damage caused by the sack of Abaddon remains to be seen. Keepers of Abaddon uh, The leader of Abaddon is his keeper, chosen by Hanvar's council. He or she serves for life. How long that life actually is can be a matter of some unpredictability. The first keeper of Abaddon was Talera, who ascended to his throne when the fortress itself was completed in cycle 6240. She served for five tumultuous years, rooting out and destroying many who could not accept the treaty that ended the Black Age. Of course, in this process, she attracted many enemies. One of them finally got poison in her wine in 6245. Abaddon was leaderless for two years, while the council debated whether it was still necessary. In the end, they answered in the affirmative. They selected Haram of the Cava to be Keeper. He rooted out the foes of the pack for eight years before he started showing an undue interest in the members of Hanvar's council itself. He disappeared in 6257 and no trace of him was ever found. The next four Keepers proved unable to master the power of Abaddon. Confused and without allies, they fell to ambitious underlings, who tended to become Keeper and die not long after. Disturbed by all of this chaos, in 6265, the council chose Redbeard to be Keeper. He seemed, at first, to be affable and easily controlled. As long as he did all the council required, he would be protected. Redbeard turned out, however, to be far more cunning than expected. 
Almost 50 years later, he still holds his post. You were surprised to find a wretch sitting in Redbeard's glorious hall. He is gnawing his way through a rack of ribs. His robes are torn and stained, and gnawed bones form a gory little pile at his feet. He gives you a wave when you approach, though he doesn't rise. I, Lord Savaro, envoy of High Lord Desco, greet you. And I... He loses track of his speech, shrugs, and returns to dismantling his lunch. What is a wretch doing in Abaddon? Eating, he belches. Your food... Been here for years. The food keeps getting better. He pats his round stomach. Look, I'm fat. It's a good thing. Not a lot of fat, wretches. You've been here for years? Four years now. I like it, except when Avanon attacked. Savaro had to hide under bench. Attack ended. Fires put out. But it took three days to open kitchen again. Bad time. How did you get here? We ride. Me and my guards. All can travel on the free roads. It's the law of the pact. Then all can come to Abaddon. Lord Desco wants to send wretch. I say send me, because I am smart. You are an example of a smart wretch. Yes, look at this. He waves the bone at you. Could be in wretch lands, hunting rats, fighting other wretches over dumb things. Instead, I, Lord Savaro, am here, safe and with meat. Only problem, Redbeard never see me. Never see how smart this wretch lord is. You are a lord. Yes, High Lord Desco says so. So it is. Lord among wretches, Saral is. Tell me about High Lord Desco. His mightiest leader, a mightiest tribe, and talking to Avedon will make him mightier still. At least was planned. Then I was here for years, with no luck, but Saral keeps trying. Lord Saral continues to gnaw his way through his meat. Occasionally he breaks through a bone to a nice pocket of marrow and makes some happy slurping noises. Wretches have a flawed understanding of court etiquette. He looks up at you, considers saying something, and then returns to his chomping. You are seeking an audience with Redbeard. Yeah, I've been trying to get one for a long time. I get ideas. My new one is really good. Really? But I need someone who can take my message. Whoever took my message to the Keeper would get a big bribe. He looks at you expectantly. I can take your message. Really? It's this. There's rebellion. Lots of rebels everywhere, even in Wretchlands. High Lord Desco wants to send his wretches to look around and spy and tell Abaddon when we find rebels. Tell Redbeard about it and I'll bribe you. He nods with satisfaction at a job well done and returns to his ribs. Lord Savaro, envoy of High Lord Desco, is a wretch who perpetually sits and stuffs his face just outside Redbeard's hall. He asks you to carry a message to Redbeard. He is offering to enlist wretches to watch for rebel activity in the Far Lands. Hopefully, Redbeard will not consider this a waste of time and punish you accordingly. There is a woman of the Taiwan Empire waiting patiently on the bench. She sits, ramrod straight, the very picture of dignity, and her clothes are pressed and immaculately clean. She motions for you to sit with her. Even though she is a farlander, she is eager to deal with any servant of Abaddon she can. Greetings, I am Felixa. I have come far to Abaddon to get help from my clan. Tell me about the Taiwan Empire. She smiles gracefully. It is my home. Though you see it as part of the Far Lands, I love it dearly. My clan is made up of farmers and traders. We know nothing of politics or the battles of great powers. There seems to be a lot going on in the Taiwan Empire. Perhaps. Again, I know nothing of it. I am no spy. Art Callan questioned me carefully when I arrived. How did you come here? On the pack's free roads, all may travel on them safely and without expense. The pact has not been kind to my unfortunate people, but you do have some good ideas. Elixir still sits on this bench, upright and dignified. It's amazing how she can maintain her perfect posture while waiting here, hour after hour and day after day. Why are you here? For the same reason so many come, I wish to find a hand to take up a cause. Payment will be provided, of course. What do you need? I'm afraid I need the services of a hand of Abaddon who travels to the Taiwan Empire. Are you such a hand? You are forced to say that you aren't. Then my vigil continues. My apologies.
Redbeard is still sitting on his throne. Hearts constantly come to visit him, delivering reports and receiving orders. He is not as tired as when as he was when you first met him, but there is barely perceptible sigh and slump of the shoulders every time he is asked for directions. He says, Malik, what do you need? My time is limited. I have a message from Lord Savarl. Oh, really? You know, that wretch has lingered in the fort here for years, eating our food, wasting our time, and now he has tricked another hand into bothering me. Why do you tolerate him? Because, I confess, he has come to amuse me. So, this message. Redbeard sits up and rests his hand on his beard in an excellent imitation of rapt attention. Go ahead. He wants to have wretched scout for rebel activity. Redbeard is still on silent. Eventually, he blinks. He seems perplexed. Wait, that is a... An idea. A good idea. A very good idea. Tell Sobaro that I will, at some point, grant him an audience. You have done well. That is all. That is all. Redbeard nods. He returns to work without a word. Redbeard was interested in your idea. Lord Sobaro is so surprised by this news that he bites his tongue. Ow, what? It's a good idea? Really? Fantastic. I knew I could do it. I will wait for Redbeard's uh, dumbant. Oh, you want a reward? Here is the thing I won in gambling. He gives you a scarab. It's a scarab. D dev. I can't use it. Thank you. He turns away and tends to his swollen tongue. Okay, glad that's taken care of now. Build snare turret. Constructs a snare turret in a nearby location that damages and snares nearby foes. The higher the skill, the higher the level of the turret. Okay, we'll increase that. Lightning wind shoots out a cone of lightning, shocking your enemies. Okay, there is one more section we should explore. This official clearly came here with both wealth and influence. Her jewelry, her silken robes, her regal bearing, which is why it seems a little odd that her desk is down here, carefully balanced in the bars of the great underfoot. When you enter, she stands and turns to you. Her dignified air is barely disturbed by the big drop of gross water that drips onto her head. Not often a hand deigns to visit me down here. I am Deeran, chosen envoy of Hanvar's council. Welcome to the luxurious office you have given me. You are from Hanver Hanvar's council? I am. They have chosen me to be their eyes. A singular honor. She looks at the lumber stacked against the wall. Not that your superiors see it that way. Tell me about the council. At 16 members, three from the each pack state, plus the Imperator, chosen by the rest of the council. They lead the pack. Them, not Avedon. Why are you down here? Because my presence reminds Avedon that there are actual limits to their power. I remind Redbeard that he is no god. That is why I prefer to keep me that's why they prefer to keep me out of sight. You are here to judge judge us. Oh yes, you should be judged every day. A small price to pay for the influence you wield. After all, you serve the pact, not the other way around. You should not be here. Avedon can only be effective if we have a free hand to act as we see fit. She smiles coolly at you. The common sentiment of Redbeard and his supporters, hence my luxurious accommodations. Why are you here? These are hard times. I have been sent to observe Avedon to make sure that it merits the wealth it consumes and the power it wields. What does your investigation entail? Nothing sinister. Nothing like what you do in your dungeons. I am a simple observer. I see what you do. What resources you have stored. I watch. I ask questions. All hands, eyes, and hearts are bound to aid me including you, and yet you are down here. A simple bit of childish on Redbeard's part. He can be a prankster. She smiles wildly. The insulting quarters I have been given will not dissuade me. I need to help you. 
You need to answer my questions when I have them. Of course. She leans back in her chair and pours a cup of tea. If you are ambitious and don't mind earning some council gold, you can find out a few things for me. Nothing dangerous, nothing that would anger your masters. Only a few things I like to see, like you to see on my behalf. What do you want to know? Nothing complicated. It will be simple. You won't even have to walk far. There's a tower above your quarters. The sign says Tower of Trials. This intrigues me. I like you to enter it and tell me what is up there. Envoy Deer insists at her desk. I would offer a chair, but Avedon never gave me one. What else do you need? Is it true that ha you have a relative here? She sighs. I wish Hannah wouldn't tell people that. It causes people to question my impartiality. So neither I nor she would dare weaken the law. People should know this. Why? We are from the Cava. We come from nobility, but we cho chose lives of service instead. Laws are meat and drink from the day we are born. If my, si if my duty forces me to bring my sister to heal, I will do it. She sighs. Does make family get-togethers a little awkward, though. Envoy Deeran was sent by Hanvar's council to investigate Avedon. Her offices are in the bank, bank storerooms under the Avedon dining hall. She asked you to enter the Tower of Trials, located near your quarters. She thinks that Hancade might have the key. I mean, she didn't even mention Hancade, but okay. Might be just an oversight there. Although we did already talk to Hancade, so yeah, maybe that's why. Okay, so we don't have to do the trial here. We just have to go in and look. From what I remember, I think. You enter the ominously named Tower of Trials. There is a filthy grate in the center of the chamber, but circles etched into the floor to either side. There is an obelisk off to one side with helpful instructions. You aren't sure why a place like this exists. Regular service in Avedon already seems like a constant series of horrible trials. However, if you want to help test this new tool for inflicting suffering on hands, it is available. I have been inside the training tower. Envoy Deeran takes notes on your description. A whole tower set aside simply to torment hands of Abaddon? That is very... Abaddon. Makes sense in its way, though I question if it is an efficient use of funds. Thank you for your aid. Let me get you something for my bag of bribes. She leaves for several minutes. When she returns, she presents you with a pouch of coins and a cloak. I'm interested in doing more work for you. I'm glad to hear it, and I have to more toys in my bribe box. Give me some time to find something that matches your skills. Okay, so we got a scarab, and we got that. We'll so civil that, and we can level up uh, specializations. I personally prefer to always do the power specialization though. I feel like that's more useful. Let's do that. Earth Discipline gives 4% per, per level resistance to magical and elemental attacks. Beast Focus every level this skill adds one level to all summoned creatures. Okay, this one's better. Actually, let's give this to her instead. Or no, we can sell it. I, I like the other swords a little bit better. But we can give this to Yannick. Since he has magical damage ability. Cost. 
I guess we can give it to Yannick though to have a chance of uh, dealing damage back whenever he's meleeed. All right, but in the meantime, I am going to go ahead and save the game right here, but I'll see you all soon with the next part of Let's Play.